and welcome in the Airflow 2.0 series. I'm super excited to be with you today because this is it. Airflow 2.0 is out, at least the beta version, and so you can start using and testing the new features of Airflow 2.0. And that's exactly what we are going to discover during this series. My name is Mark Lamarty, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer, and I'm thrilled to show you those new awesome features. But before getting started, let me show you the questions we are going to answer together. I think the first and most important question you might have is what happens if the scheduler goes down? Indeed, if you are running Airflow in production, you know that the single point of failure of your architecture is the scheduler. If the scheduler goes down, you won't be able to trigger any more tasks. Well, in Airflow 2.0, this has been solved, and not only that. Next, you might have many variables that you are using in different DAGs, and at some point you would like to know which variable is used in which DAG. But you can't do that right now with Airflow 2.0, neither with Airflow 1.10.x. So the question is, can you build a tool on top of Airflow in order to do that? Well, as we are going to see, with the new API, that's exactly what you can do. Another situation you might have is you have many different sensors waiting for something to happen before moving to the next task. The problem with sensors is that they take worker slots. As you may know, a worker slot is used in order to execute a task in Airflow, and this number of worker slots is limited. That means if you have many sensors running at the same time, at some point you might not be able to run any more tasks. That's why in Airflow 2.0, a new type of sensor has been introduced. Another point that I've seen so many often is that writing DAGs is pretty long and repetitive. So is there a better way, faster way, or a more understandable way to create DAGs? As you are going to discover as well, there is a new way to create your DAGs, which is truly powerful. Also, I know that many of you are using sub DAGs extensively in your DAGs. The problem with sub DAGs is that they are not really recommended because of deadlocks and also because you can end up with weird behaviors if you are trying to execute multiple tasks at the same time using the local executor, for example, in your sub DAGs. That's why it is recommended to use the sequential executor instead. Now, in Airflow 2.0, there is a new concept of task groups in order to solve the problems with the sub DAGs. Finally, it is possible that you execute all of your tasks using the Kubernetes pod operator or even the Kubernetes executor. And you know that you have some limitations because Airflow restricts the parameters that you can modify with the Kubernetes API. In Airflow 2.0, that's not the case anymore. You can fully leverage the Kubernetes API and that means new possibilities as well. As you can see, we are going to address very important questions during this series. Airflow 2.0 is a huge update and you will definitely use it if you are using Airflow in production. So I strongly advise you to take a look at the next videos to discover the new awesome features. So fasten your seatbelt, take a deep breath and see you in the next video.